सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री वी फिनिश्ड मॉड्यूल वन विथ सिक्स लेक्चर्स एंड वी डिड द प्रैक्टिस सेशंस फॉर एक्सरसाइज वन ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ बाय द सेल्फ एंड वी डिड स्टेप्स वन टू एंड थ्री सो इन स्टेप वन वी वर जस्ट सेइंग वील ऑब्जर्व the imagination and try to observe it at every moment particularly the feeling in the imagination in step 2 we asked to evaluate this feeling and see if it is naturally acceptable to us or not do you seem to want to have the continuity of this feeling or not to have the continuity of this and in step 3 we were asking to evaluate the impact of this feeling on my state so with this feeling that i have do i feel comfortable within or uncomfortable within do i you know uh, am i in contradiction or am i in harmony so in other words do i feel happy with this feeling or do i feel unhappy with this feeling so these three steps we had completed and yesterday in the assignment the um what we had given in the assignment for um self reflection we had asked these same questions to observe the imagination throughout the day yesterday and notice if the feeling at any moment is naturally acceptable to you or not and whether you are comfortable or uncomfortable with that feeling along with that we also asked you to look at the status of the continuity of feelings in you that are naturally acceptable that means during the day how much of the time approximately we were comfortable and how much we were uncomfortable and particularly how much time in continuity could we be comfortable without being uncomfortable see what i'm saying continuity of the comfort with the feeling yesterday so this was another thing and the third thing we had asked to reflect on there was um, we had a discussion yesterday about past experiences sometimes somebody behaves a certain way and with that experience now there is resentment in us and when that person comes before us we have a feeling of opposition for that person so we had asked you to check if that feeling of opposition seems to appear only at this time or from the time of the past experience this has been going on it is there in me but i did not see it only when that person comes before me it's like a trigger that shows me that this feeling was there so with this if anybody has any reflections um anything you'd like to share about this what we are been talking about then uh, we can take your sharings namaste didi namaste namaste to all co explorers good morning yeah the uh, from few days i was observing my feelings what is happening uh, while taking class or the lab mm-hmm. i have this expectation from students that everyone should come regularly and they have to listen the class mm-hmm. and they have to do the work i am giving so one day the student has come with the observation and he has not completed the work <clears throat> so he bought the same that he took last time one week before so i got that feeling of um opposition irritation anger and i shouted at them okay and i told that you are fit for nothing you cannot change 
so i <clears throat> i badly shouted then after some time i observed my feeling at that time then i realized that uh, i have mistrust i doubted their intention so with this mistrust i started to disrespect them by saying that you are useless you are fit for nothing you will not change yes. then uh, in continuation with that feeling i have this hatred also these students nowadays they are like this only so um, i am in disharmony at that time but uh, when i am observing i am not disturbed during that time i was disturbed so this is what i have observed uh, during that incident very nice very nice vidish babu ji yes and uh, yesterday i uh, announced an exam for them mm -hmm. so last week they said they will write but they postponed it for this week again this week they are saying uh, some other faculty is taking the class now i have not disturbed so i gave the question paper and i asked the two days saturday sunday you write at home and bring open book test mm -hmm. so now uh, i am not doubting their intention then i am not getting this feeling of opposition anger uh, yes devi this is what uh, i am trying to understand that uh, feeling of trust is very much important in relationship otherwise all other feelings will not follow yes very true very nice observation jagdish babu ji and very commendable to bring it up many people hesitate to share but it is nice that you could bring it up and i'm sure it will be useful for others who are listening also very nice and one more uh, thing uh, regarding past experience mm -hmm. one of uh, my colleague and myself i had a uh, misunderstanding uh, from past 4 5 years we, um, something happened in the department uh, so we had a miscommunication and misunderstandings we had a argument in the meetings and we stopped talking but whenever we face each other he is also not happy i am also not happy right. and now after uhv that i understood that he has done or i have done uh, these um, arguments based on lack of understanding so now i am not disturbed uh, once i try to go and talk to him uh so but he but i, I went to him with uh, another senior member so he thought that i went there to fight so yes. he shouted again on me uh, then okay uh, that senior person told you go from here i will talk to him so the uh, gap has increased more and more uh so he, he he told to other person i will see his end all these things but i am nowadays kept calm and i am waiting to um, realize I, i am waiting so that let him realize relationship with me then i will talk so is it correct that i should wait until he see this relationship i am not getting confidence to go again to talk to him uh, i am thinking that he will again um, not show interest to talk to me so this feeling is disturbing sometimes but i am realizing his lack of understanding so i have to wait until he see the relationship in me yes this yeah i mean um, <laughs> i would look at it is that you know when such misunderstandings happen lot has happened in the past no from yes. both sides mistakes both sides. Have from both sides now with that same you know he when you come before him this he expects the same thing again so 
proactively or you know in defense to start with he is just blurting out something getting angry upset and so on but you know if i can just say one sentence with calmness that you know i didn't come here to fight and i just came to apologize for the mistakes that i have made this is how i would do it see the other person whatever you are you know you, you he expects you to come and shout so he is already doing that now when you say i didn't come here for that and i am sorry for all the mistakes that have happened in the past i just wanted to start fresh because we both may have made mistakes but i apologize for whatever see what happens is we think we it's difficult to apologize because it is somewhere showing that i am weak it's not that no i am special i have not done the mistake you, uh, the mistake is others that yes. is the feeling yes. so the uh, apologization is not coming ha huh. so as long as i have this feeling that the mistake is by the other yes now is this a feeling of relationship yeah that, that that is where it's not working <laughs> yeah so i really don't have the feeling of relationship right now so i have to work on my feeling and yes. then isn't it yes if i am expecting him to say something to try to start fresh it may not work because he is also waiting for me to say something yes. we are both unhappy we both want to resolve it but we don't know how because like you mentioned this ego is coming in the middle yes that, you know i was not wrong he made the mistake and he is thinking the same way yeah. what i look at it is how i look at it is even if the other misinterpreted something i said and it it is not my mistake does it make me any smaller if i just say that i apologize for whatever miscommunication we had and um, let's start fresh we were good yeah. friends and you know we can start fresh but whenever you are ready give me a call yeah leave it at that that's it if he responds right away well and good if he doesn't respond right away give him time but from your side you are calm you are comfortable you have made your effort yes but till you say those words he doesn't know what you are thinking yes. he still thinks that you came to fight hmm. so then it will not work no yeah sure sure yeah whenever um, there is a discussion he brings all the past um experiences past miscommunication misunderstanding everything mm -hmm. so something is um, pulling me back but uh, with this feeling i cannot continue to work when he yes. faces i have feeling of opposition there so um, with this i am not in harmony so i had to resolve it somewhere mm -hmm. the other day but uh, yeah i had to take a step um, so yes i will work on it yeah See, even if he brings the past things, we can always say, you know, I agree. I made a lot of mistakes, and perhaps we both miscommunicated things. And I know that you also don't mean all the things that you may have said. But let's start fresh. So we take the, you know, proactively we try to resolve it. You will see that the other will slowly respond. maybe not right then maybe later you might reflect on it and maybe respond yeah and this continuity uh, is important um, so uh, most of the time i am observing my feeling and the feeling is of relationship with all so this type of incidents should also be resolved otherwise there is no continuity is yes. certainly because it will keep coming up 
it will keep popping up because it is this thing of you know something causing discomfort it keeps poking like it's like a you know you you notice it and you don't want it there so it keeps bothering you yes yes thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you namaste dev ha namaste uh the uh, regarding the observation yesterday mm -hmm. yesterday i was doing the evaluation so next to me also my department colleagues also doing the evaluation in the evaluation there is another part called moderation it so means which our already valued scripts will be moderated uh, but one my one of my colleague uh, i think she uh, she, uh, she is doing the uh, what is called uh, simply the uh, means moderation means again she has to check it check the answers and verify the whether the previous valuation is right or wrong but uh, uh, in order to complete it fast she is not at all looking at the answers just simply whatever the previous valuator uh, put up the mark she, she is entering the same mark and she is just submitting the uh, what, what is called a script it is it's a digital valuation and i have seen her doing the same thing uh, even in the earlier uh, valuation also uh, she, even she can she will use uh, multiple logins uh, some uh, she will tell some other junior to uh, do the same thing it is uh, i found it uh, uh, very difficult even if if i do the self uh, moderation i will go through it once again if there is a latest of mistake in the interest of the student also but when she was doing yesterday i i was uh, not comfortable so when mm -hmm. i was not comfortable i was imagining why it is uh, i am doing why i am not comfortable i thought mm -hmm. one thing did what is it uh, uh, means uh, when she was doing this no i was sitting next to her i am not comfortable my feeling was not good so uh -huh. then uh, i thought of uh, what is going on myself So I thought of two things. One is uh, doing like this valuation is not ethical. That is one thing. And also, uh, she has taken more number of uh, uh, means. Uh, she is a moderator for five valuators. If she cannot do for justice, she can give it to the somebody else who can do the justice. This was the thing. And also, one more thought came. If I complain this to the higher ups, uh, that uh, who is the coordinator. and they'll come to know i am the one who is uh, done uh, complain date or other thing even if i tell to them uh, even i have already told earlier also when i was the coordinator she will not uh, understand this so i was finding it difficult to handle that yeah this is what we do see have we tried discussing the thing with her uh the past experience is that earlier also once i was a coordinator i told that yeah. don't uh, do the simultaneous evaluation as well as the moderation uh and it is not the only one faculty another two or uh, two three juniors yeah. and along with I, that i got your point see the yeah. thing is if you notice what we try to do when we feel that somebody is not doing the right thing Hmm? Yeah, we may come. Let me finish. Yes. We try to tell them that what they are doing is wrong. Yes. That's what we are feeling. Yes. That's what we are feeling. Now, how would you feel if somebody came and told you you are doing something wrong? You will not feel good, na? yeah yeah the first thing you have is feeling of opposition this is what is happening we have feeling yeah. of opposition within us with that feeling of opposition we are telling them you are doing something wrong you should do it this way that yeah. person already has now feeling of opposition it yeah. doesn't work both sides opposition we don't see the relationship yeah. what is a better way i can see something she is doing is not right but if i can see like to do something on your end if you can mute yourself 
for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if I can see this, that, you know, she is doing something which I, which is unethical, which is wrong, not right for the student, not just. Then I can see what is a better method or how I can suggest things to her and show her that perspective for the student, that for the student, it may not be just. And so perhaps you can, what I would suggest is, maybe you can look at this part, that you can also do it like this. Or some suggestion without trying to tell them, no, you're wrong. First thing we tell them, others is, no, no, not like this. Do it like this. This is wrong. The moment you say that, and it's not just saying, because we are thinking like this. Like you said, she did this, and this is unethical. And if she can't do it, why don't give it to somebody else? And I have complained before, I can complain again, but it may not work. Because we are complaining, we are not seeing what we can do. So we can, first and foremost, if our feeling is right, with concern, we will try to help them. But we'll come to that. When we do the feelings, you can, you know, when we try to work on in the coming steps in the exercise, we will discuss it in more detail. But here I would say, watch our own feeling. We think we are uncomfortable because of the other person. But what is my feeling within? This is driving my complaint against her. This is driving my thoughts about whatever I'm thinking. Right? Yeah, so just... yeah thank you. Thank you. That is why uh, even I used to suffer a lot. Like this means whole day, I used to be in this mode only. But yeah. yesterday, after coming from college, I just left those those things. I just wanted to talk to you because where I am not uh, uh, going well, uh, not in order. So I wanted to talk to you. That is why uh, earlier, uh, past, I used to suffer for the days, weeks together uh, in this mode. Uh, I think I'll just uh, find out a new way to talk to her if I found this, this thing. So I'll just yeah. correct my thing. you think of a way to talk to her, try to see from her perspective. Maybe she is overworked, maybe she doesn't, you know, it's lack of understanding. Not that she intentionally wants to damage some other students, you know, or be unjust to some student. It is just that it, she doesn't seem to understand the significance. She doesn't have the right understanding. So with that concern, with the right feeling, now you go to talk to her, you will be able to, it will come out in a different manner. But the important talk thing is the feeling in me. That if I have the right feeling with that, when I talk, now the whole picture changes. And having the right feeling just means seeing things from her perspective, having concern for her. Right? Also. I mean, have oh, concern okay. for the student, but have concern for her. Also. But very nice you brought this up because, see what you mentioned earlier, it was weeks, weeks that you would, it would linger. This is what happens to all of us. You know, it goes on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and we think it is the other person. And because of that feeling of opposition, we don't talk to that other person. We avoid the other person, but you can avoid the other person. But how can you avoid the feelings in your yourself? So you are living with that. And that is creating disturbance in us. So um, just reflect on it and see. What okay, can. Thank you. Thank you. thank you for your sharing. Okay, now we'll go forward. Uh, Sunilji, we can put back that uh, lecture seven slide. We'll, now we are going to start module two in UHV3, which is about understanding the human being and the expansion, exploring our potential in a way. We keep saying we have the potential. And this particular lecture, we are talking about right understanding. 
so even right understanding we keep talking about it but the details generally you know we may not be clear about the details of what it is so we'll uh, look at that in this lecture can we go forward yeah so this is what we have been doing in the past module and in the previous workshop also you you know we have been talking about this we have a desire for continuous happiness we want continuity of happiness this is a need our need need of the self and for this continuous happiness we said that we need right understanding right feeling right thought this is also within the self so the need of the self can be fulfilled by the activity of the self and this we said is resolution now we also looked at in the last lecture that we did we looked at what it means to be resolved what is the meaning of resolution so it involves all of these steps from 3.1 to 3.9 having the right understanding based on that being able to see you know what the purpose is what the goal is to identify based on the understanding and then to have the wisdom you can open up the slide to have the wisdom No, with the right understanding having the wisdom to identify the goal and then to work on or to be able to see how to go about fulfilling this goal so what we called science the how to part then it also involves my behavior behavior means interaction with other human beings so how i am going to resolve it in actual you know when i am actually dealing with another human being it will also involve my work with nature so when i interact with nature this will reflect in my interaction with nature my participation in the larger order so seeing myself my role it you know in all the levels that i live in so within my immediate family say with the larger um unit larger uh, group of units then with you know society at large seeing my role even in nature and so on so my participation in the larger and larger order and ultimately the outcome of all this would be an undivided human society a universal human order and a state in which you know this this can be continued not just in my generation but for the next generation and the next and the next so that it becomes a human tradition so what we are saying is clarity of all this is included when we say resolution which ultimately within the self is understanding right understanding and on the basis of that having the right feeling and right thought with that all of this clarity and doing these steps outside so you can open up the full slide yeah you can see now that these first three steps the right understanding means seeing the existence the way it is and we'll come to that what exactly we mean by seeing the existence the way it is with that being able to see what is my purpose what is my goal here and how do i go about it? so all this is happening in the self now when i interact with other human beings with nature i see my role and i participate in the larger order 
here i am doing whatever i am doing outside with the help of the body so this is with the self and the involvement of the body and then the result of this will be reflected outside which is the undivided human society universal human order and human tradition in which this human goal is fulfilled generation after generation so this uh, whole thing we refer to as resolution now coming to right understanding we use this term a lot we can go to the next slide so what exactly do we mean by right understanding so we said that right understanding means to see the reality as it is in its completeness and that is also referred to as knowing now you might think that okay i do know in its completeness i have done the workshop and i have heard all the sessions and we talked about all the four orders in nature and all of this so now i know but what we have what has happened is we have got the information it is not the same as seeing the information we get how we hear through the ears perhaps we see through the eyes isn't it through the body we are using the tools of the you know we are using the body's sense organs to get all this information within us now what has to happen is the processing has to happen of this within us so the contemplation part that has to take place within us this contemplation about the relationship with all the units further to these are higher activities within me that have to awaken within me then only i can see it within myself right now it is just thoughts information but now when i contemplate on it when i churn it within me when i am able to see my relationship with every other unit in this existence this is what we are referring to as contemplation seeing my relationship and seeing my participation then further i you know awaken to the activity of understanding where i can see the harmony the self organization that is there in every unit in nature and ultimately awaken to the activity of realization where i can see directly everything exactly the way it is not colored by my assumptions not colored by something that i believe or disbelieve but rather what i can directly see so we'll take some example um you can open up the slide yeah so if you are talking about right understanding of a unit any unit when we say right understanding what it means is i should be able to see you know how the thing looks that i can see right with the gross eyes i can see that i see the form so i can see the shape the size maybe the density and so on when i think about it i may be able to see the property of that unit the effect that unit is having on another unit so say the sunlight or the sun well let's take a simpler example maybe we'll take a tree so if you look at a tree outside now in the first step you are probably seeing with the gross eyes you can see there is a tree there are leaves there are branches you can see the form you can see the shape and so on perhaps you can identify which 
type of tree this is. This is a mango tree or this is a papaya tree or this is some other tree. When you think about it and when you, you know, you may be able to appreciate the properties, what the effect is of this unit on another unit. For instance, I may be able to see that, okay, this tree gives mangoes or gives papayas, depending on what tree it is. And this is a fruit that is nurturing for my body. It nourishes the human body. So I can see the impact of that. I can observe that. Beyond this, now this much, you'll see a lot of variety. Different units seem to have different forms, different properties, you know, so many plants. So many animals, so many units. Everything seems to have a lot of variety. And all these keeps, you know, you, you will see here that the form is changing. So many things are changing. If you go further and you look at you know, through your higher activities. Like we said, once we activate the contemplation, activity of contemplation within us, we are able to see the natural characteristic of the unit or its participation in the larger order. So we are able to see the relationship of this unit with me with other units and its participation. Then if we look at further the, you know, if we awaken to the activity of understanding, we are able to see the self-organization that is there in every unit, the harmony that is there in every unit how things are, you know, how seems to be always so. Like for instance, if you see in the human body, there are so many cells. All these cells are working together. You know, we have trillions of cells. All of these cells are working and they have, you know, in different parts of the body, like you have, say, maybe heart, you have lungs, you have so many other organs. First of all, these cells form, you know, groups and form tissues. Then these tissues come together or work together to form part of an organ and so on. So you have different um, sort of cells. Now they are working together, but at the same time, they are all working in a particular way, what we're calling self-organization. There is a harmony. So things are happening. You can see that your temperature normally stays a certain degree. It, it is a narrow range it stays in. You can see that there is a balance of the electrolytes in your body. You can see that the oxygen level seems to be in balance. All this is a self-organization within the body, isn't it? So this we are able to see, the harmony. And then eventually, as we awaken to the activity of realization, then we are able to see the submergence, how all the units are submerged in space. We can see it directly. We can see the space, which is the subtlest unit, which we may not have the competence right now to see, but the potential is there in each one of us to be able to see that. So to be able to see the submergence of all these units and the coexistence of all these units in space, that all these units are coexisting with one another and with space. 
So all of this, when I'm able to see for every unit, that would be right understanding. And that gives a feeling of assurance in me that this is how things are. Now there's no uncertainty. Now there's no fear that something may suddenly happen in some way because I can see it all. And I can see that this is how the existence is. This is the pattern. So I just, you know, I'm, I have that confidence that this is how it is. So now if you look at this, open up the slide further. Now if you look at this, you will see, yes, that the, you know, the form and the property, this part, in different units, it will seem very different. So it will look like there is so much variety. Things are changing. Isn't it? You see the human body, the form is changing. At birth, it is a small baby. As you get older, you see the human body is growing. And then as age advances, elderly, and then the death of the body. So you'll see that all these changes are there. And you see in different human beings, the body has different shape. So a lot of variety, different color, different shape. The form looks different. So it looks like there is so, so many things, so much to see, so much to try to understand. It seems very complicated. There's so much variety, so much is changing. But if once you awaken to the higher activities and you look at these other um, aspects of a unit, when you focus on the relationship of the unit, its participation in the larger order or what we call the natural characteristic, when you see the harmony of any unit, how it is self-organized, what we refer to as the innateness, like for a plant, it is innate to the plant that it will grow. And all plants you will see, they are growing. There will be no plant that doesn't grow. And you will see this organization of everything in the units, how it is working on its own. You are not doing anything to make it happen, things are happening. So this self-organization. And then when you see the coexistence, the submergence, there in these three parts or in these three of the characteristics, you will find there is definiteness. That it is always so. It doesn't keep changing. For every unit, you will find that the relationship it is able to recognize and participate in the larger order. Leaving aside the human being for now, we will see in other units, you can see this. And you can see the self-organization in every unit. You can see how every unit is coexisting with every other unit. So here you can see the definiteness. Here you can see Continuity, it's not changing, it's not different for different units. There is universality in this. This, what we are talking about at the base. But if you look at it on the surface, through the gross eyes of the human body, then it looks like there's so much variety, so much difference in all the units, and we can't see any similarities or very little similarity. It looks like too much variety and a lot of changes happening. But at the base, when we start seeing things the way they really are, we find that variety, that surface change is only at the surface. At the base, deep down, you can see these three things that we have mentioned the relationship of every unit with every other unit. 
and the participation of every unit in its larger order. So that part you will find it is not something that is changing. That is something that is constant. You will see this in every unit. Similarly, the harmony within any unit also there is a certain self-organization. That is how it functions. That is how it is so. And it doesn't keep changing. Like we discussed the human body or you can say the plant. You can see in the plant also. Things are happening, isn't it? How you put a plant in the, you put a seed in the soil and you think that you have grown that plant. But what do you do? You only put some water. Maybe you give it some manure. Maybe you put it in a place where there is some sunlight. But you're not growing that plant, isn't it? Something is happening within itself in such a way that it tends to come up. It's growing. And eventually you see the shoot come out from the soil and it grows and it can grow to as big as a tree. You only planted that seed. Sometimes you don't even plant the seed. See, some animal ate a fruit and in the feces, the seed came out. It is in the soil and all this is happening. So you can see in forests how densely populated the forests can be. And there is no human intervention there. So all this is happening. There is a certain harmony. There is a certain self-organization. And all of these units, when you can directly see the space and the submergence of all these units in space, that is what we're calling the realization of the coexistence. With all of this put together, every unit, now you look at it in this completeness. This is right understanding. Essentially, seeing the reality the way it actually is, the essence of it, at the base how it is. Seeing that part which is definite, which is continuous, which is universal. So this whole thing would be referred to as right understanding, incompleteness. To see every unit the way it really is in its completeness. Meanwhile, we'll reflect on this. This is an important thing to reflect on and uh, we'll discuss tomorrow. I'll put an uh, assignment also in the group.